Hello, our church family and friends. I'm so thankful that you have joined me today. Our church is a non-denominational church that meets in Madison, Wisconsin, Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. And we would invite you to make our church your church today. If you can come visit us in person, we would love to see you. Now, this is a recorded message and we air it live through all our platforms or we stream it live through all our platforms at the same time so that everybody can hear the same message at the same time. But we meet in Sunday mornings and we have worship together. We have communion together. Our children's church go to church together and we have a great time. We have many events and we would love for you to come be a part of our family. Uh, but most important, I believe you should ask the Lord where you belong in the family of God and get planted there. Oh, my friends, if it's with us, get here as soon as you can. Now, if you live too far outside of the southern Wisconsin area, continue to join us online. I am so thankful that you are here and join us today. Oh, well, let's jump right into the message. I am finishing up our series, Decoding Victory, and we have talked about spiritual war fair that is going on and that God is the master planner. He is the general in charge. We get orders from headquarters. He is setting us up for victory. But there's some things in our life that we need to do to decode this victory, to walk in this victory and see spiritual victory in our lives. And we talked about the first one a couple weeks ago. Stop believing the lies. Stop believing the lies that people have said about you, teachers, family members. It doesn't matter where it came from, co-workers, uh, spouses, uh, children. It don't matter where this lie came from. It was inspired and whispered by the enemy. Do not believe it. You are a child of God. You are called to be in such a time as this, and you are important to the kingdom. Uh, we also talked about the importance of embracing the Word of God because it is sharper than two-edged sword that can divide our spirit from our soul. So we'll know the difference between what is God and what is us. And how could we ever have any moral standings unless they come from the one who created all things? That is our Father. So we embrace the Word. We stop believing the lie. And today, this message, I've titled it, Go to Church. <laughs> And I am thankful that you are with me today, that you are uh, involved in church today. And many of you may hear this message and say, well, I got this. You know, I, I may need to do the other two a little bit or embrace these things. But when it comes to going to church, I've got it down. I'm here today. I'm watching live. I'm watching the rebroadcast. Whatever it is, you may say, I got this. All right, well, look. Church is so important, and I want to put the, the why behind the what, right? I want you to know what you're doing, why you're doing what you're doing. It's more than just a tradition. It's, there is power behind going to church, and being connected with like believers is so important. So we're going to jump in that today, but before we do, I do want to say this. This is not a correction uh, sermon. This is not... Uh, to get people where they need to be type of sermon. Our church, I am so thankful for every member that joins us online and in person. Our numbers have been great. This is not to try to boost anything. This really is informational and to let you know why behind the what. I, I believe when you know the why, your what is more powerful. You begin to come to the church with the right purpose, with the right mentality, for the right reasons, and it becomes more effective for you. All right, so let's jump right into the Word. We're going to turn in our Bibles to Exodus chapter 5. But before we do, you know, talking about coming to church, 
Uh, sometimes I'm sure you may not feel like it. We're in the fall season here in Wisconsin. And sometimes I know this, this is what gets me in the morning sometimes, uh, is when the bed is so warm and the air outside is just got this winter or fall crisp in it. And you're just like, I want to stay under these blankets a little bit longer. Uh, I get that. I understand that. And I do want to say this. I think you should be faithful to church. But I also understand, one, sometimes, you know, the Bible talks about an ox falling in the ditch. There, there must be work done uh, that, you know, something that's happened that must be taken care of. And I also understand that the people travel in vacations and all these things. And that, I think, is glorious and wonderful. If you have that ability to do so, do it. Enjoy time with your family and enjoy, you know, your break and being able to step out of life and it's busy. But if we have the ability to come to church, and I also understand that there are shut-ins and people that are not able to leave their home. And I am so thankful for podcasts like this and uh, on demand and uh, airing live services. And I listen to so many ministers online and I am thankful, so unbelievably thankful for the word that is able to go around the world on, on the internet, and I am glorious and would never give it up for anything. But yet we still need to have a local church where we get together and worship God. Kind of reminds me of a story <laughs> of a man who uh, woke up and he he laid in bed a little longer than he should, and his wife is getting ready for church, and he he tells his wife, he says, uh, he goes, honey. I just, I don't want to go today. I just really don't want to go to church. I, I think I'm going to stay home. And she goes, well, I've gotten up and I've gotten ready and I'm ready to go to church. The kids have gotten up and they've gotten ready and they're going to church. And he goes, yeah, you know, but the building, I don't even like the church building. And he goes, and the people, the people don't like me and I don't like the people. And she goes, let me tell you the main reason you're going to go. One, you're going to get up, you're going to get ready, and the reason you're going to get ready is you're the pastor and they're expecting you. <laughs> And so I think everybody at some point in their life has just wanted to sleep a little longer, rest a little longer. Uh, but there is such an important reason. My first point today, and we're starting off with the first point here, is God's presence. God's presence. Now, some of you may say, is God not omnipresent? Absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt. That is one of the attributes of God is that He is everywhere. And there is a difference between the different types of presence of the Lord. There's an inner presence. We, we know He's omnipresent, but there's also an inner presence. The Holy Spirit lives on the inside of us. When we accept Jesus as our Savior, our spirit is alive. God makes a home on the inside of us. He leads, guides, and directs us and teaches us also all things. But there's also a manifest presence of the Lord. Now, this is uh, when His presence is made known in the natural. So He is everywhere. Everywhere, whether you sense him or whether you don't, he lives on the inside of you, but there is a manifest presence. Now, one of my favorite breakfast places here in Madison, Wisconsin, has something they call bacon pancakes. And it is glorious. They, they make pancakes with bacon in the middle of them. And it is really good bacon. And then I always ask for pecans. In, uh, put into the batter because I love pecans and they are great. And I just want to be very clear. It is pecans. It is not pecans. I'll tell you what my granddaddy used to tell me. A pecan is something you eat. A pecan is something you leave next to the bed. That was before indoor plumbing. Uh, so it is pecans. All right. And so I asked them to put pecans in the batter for me. And then I asked them to put pecans on it as well. You know, sprinkle it over and I asked them if they could put 
put bacon just not only on the inside, but crumble bacon on the outside over top of it as well. I love that God lives on the inside of me. I love that God is omnipresence. I love that he is an inward presence. But my friend, there is nothing like the manifest presence on top. Those bacon pancakes is wonderful with bacon on the inside of them, but it's also wonderful with bacon on the outside of it. Well, manifesting on the outside. I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit is more than just living on the inside of you. The presence of God is more than just everywhere and living on the inside of you. There is a manifest presence where his presence is made known in your presence. Now, let's look here at Exodus 25. Now, his presence is made known, and this happens in a more powerful way when we come together. Let's look at Exodus 25 and verse 8. And let them make me a sanctuary that I God, he's speaking, may dwell among them. God says, build me a house that I can dwell with my people. Now let's jump to verse 22. And it states there, and there I will meet with thee. He's talking about the sanctuary and I will commune with thee. Well, let's look at the New Testament. Let's look at Matthew 18 and verse 20. God, Jesus himself says this, where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am in the midst of them. And I'm sure you've experienced this before. When you go to church and you get in the presence and praise and worship and people are worshiping, the Bible tells us that God inhabits the praises of his people. And then we also just read in Matthew where two or three gather together in his name. He's there with them. And so when we get together and we worship and we hear God's word, God is in the midst of us. And I am sure you, like me, have experienced many times the manifest presence of God when we gather together, it is amplified, he is here, and his spirit is manifest. Yes, we still have the omnipresent. Yes, we still have the inner presence. But my friend, we get to have the manifest presence of the Lord. We get to feel and see his spirit operate in the natural and it is increased when we gather together. Now, right before the people of God go into the promised land, God was a little angry and he told Moses, I will not be going with you into the promised land, but don't worry, I will send an angel. And Moses says, God, do you cannot not your presence can't leave us. First, he says, how will we be known? How will people know that we're different, that we serve you unless your presence is with us? And then he says, don't even take us. I don't even want to go. We'll stay right here then. We won't go nowhere. We'll stay here if it means your presence will stay with us. Moses recognized what made a difference in his life, what made a difference in the people's life, what made a difference in that nation that was forming life, what made their life better was the very presence of the Lord. The only thing that makes church different from any other organization in the world is the manifest presence of the Lord, that God is here. In Genesis 28, Jacob was running from his brother and running for his own life. His, his brother was going to kill him. And, and he's running with everything he got, has in him. And he finally gives up. He finally has to rest. He's running through the night and he has to sleep for a little while. He lays down and he just, you know, not even 24 hours before gets a blessing. He tricks his father. You know the story. He tricks his father and receives a blessing from God, from his father. And he's running for his life. He lays down. He falls asleep. When he wakes up, he recognizes the presence of the Lord is there. He gets a stone. He anoints the stone and he says, surely the Lord is in this place. And he names that place Bethel, which means 
house of God. What made that location the house of God? The manifest presence of the Lord. What makes any church the house of God? The manifest presence of the Lord. One of the reasons we come to church and worship together is to experience the manifest presence of the Lord. Uh, my first point, the presence of God. My second point is the power of God. We come to church for the very power of the Lord. Let's look at Matthew 18 and verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. We just read that one not too long ago, but let's look at the scriptures that are before it. 19 and verse 20. All together, are you ready? Again, I say unto you that if, if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Where is his presence is, wherever his presence is, there his power is also. Wherever his presence is, his power is there as well. Let's look at Deuteronomy 32 and verse 30. How should one chase a thousand and two put 10,000 to fight. It can only be done in the presence of the Lord. And I want you to notice this. One will chase 1,000, but two will put 10,000 to flight. We are powerful, more powerful, when we come together. When we get in church together, when we worship together, the manifest presence is together. And where his presence is, his power is also. And the more believers that are together in a place, walking in his power, the greater the manifest presence of the Lord is. Oh, my friends, the Bible even tells us, forsake not the assemblies of yourselves together. And it even says, especially in the latter, and it says, even as the habit of some is. It's the habit of some people not to be faithful to church. It's the habit of some people not to go to church or to go for a little while and then come out. But my friend, I'm telling you, the Lord's presence is in the house. It's in Bethel. It's in the church. And when we get together, his manifest presence is there. And when we get together, his power is there because wherever his presence is, his power is also. I believe you should ask the Lord where your church is. I believe you should ask the Lord, what church do I belong to? And then I believe you should get planted in that church, put roots down in that church. Now, I want to be very clear. It does not mean that you can't visit other churches. It doesn't mean you can't travel and go to other revivals in the city or somewhere else. Absolutely, I think that's wonderful to be able to do. There's a revival in my city or a meeting coming on in my city this Sunday, and I'll be going Sunday night to their service. I look forward to it. And so we can fellowship with other believers believers, but yet we should have our own home church. I believe in that. Let's look at Psalms 92 and verse 13. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. Now, I want to read the next verse in just a moment, but I want to point out that we have to be planted if we want to flourish in the courts of the Lord. The, the, uh, and let's just look again. I'll read it one more time. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall. What, what must they be done? They must be planted and then they shall flourish in the courts of our God. Verse 14, and they shall bring forth fruit in old age. They shall be fat and flourish. Now, some of you may read that and say, oh, no, I can't go to church. I'm already stretching some of my clothes out. I'm already at my top weight. That, this is not the fat that it's talking about. 
Uh, the word fat here means vigorous, it means stalwart, it means loyal, and this is only for those that are planted. It, again, it says those that be planted in the house of the Lord, they shall flourish in the courts of God, but they shall also bring forth fruit in old age. Do you know why that's important? Because look at trees. When they get old, their fruit does not begin to produce as it once had, and as that tree tree is getting older and older and older, the quality of the fruit tends not to be as good, and the amount of fruit tends not to be as good. But I'm telling you, God is saying when you are planted in His church, in His presence, in His place, when you're planted in Bethel, the house of God, when you have your local church and you're planted in it, you shall flourish, and it doesn't matter how old you are, your fruit will be produce and it will be good. God has a plan for you and you shall be fat, not F-A-T, but P-H-A-T. You shall be loyal. I love that this word is vigorous, uh, stalwart, and loyal. When you are planted in a church, you're to be loyal to that church. And I believe as you are planted, that loyalty is learned. That loyalty is installed inside of you. That in the vigorous and then flourishing, you will flourish in all that God has for you. And I, you may have never heard a message like this taught, but I want you to understand that God created the church. He has a purpose for the church. Whether you've never seen this purpose before or not, He says those that are planted, those that are rooted and grounded in His house, they will flourish. They will experience the manifest presence of the Lord. They will experience experience the power of the Lord. They will be vigorous. They will be loyal. They will be uh, fruit that is constantly producing and they will flourish in all that they have. And my last point today, the reason why we go to church is God's people. You might think, I have the presence of the Lord. I have the power of the Lord. Why do I need the people of God? That's a good question. God's presence flows through His people. <laughs> you need people of God. You need the people of God. Out of everything God created in the beginning was good. When He created man, He said everything He created was good. But when He saw Adam by Himself, he said, this is not good. Adam needs somebody else. I'm telling you, you were never created to be an island unto yourself. You were created for godly fellowship, not only with the Lord, but with each other. And can I tell you this? You may say, now, well, let me put it this way. There will come a time that you're going to need something from God, a word from God. You're going to need somebody to pray for you. You're going to need somebody to lift up your arms when all you want to do is collapse. You're going to need a brother or sister in the house of God to bless you, to bring a word from God to you. And that day, you're going to need them. But can I say this too? There may, not may, there is. It happens all the time for you. And maybe you haven't even recognized it. When you show up at church, how about this? There may be somebody else that needs a word from the Lord. There may be someone else that just needs someone to be friendly to them. That's had a tough week. There may be someone else that needs prayer. And God will deliver it through you. God in His infinite power and infinite wisdom decided to use His creation he decided to use his children to deliver prophecy, to deliver prayer, to deliver encouragement, to deliver power through. So maybe you don't need anything at the moment, but maybe you need to be the one to give at that moment. Maybe there's somebody who needs you in church. So it's not only do we need others, but others also need us. And I think sometimes when, and this has just kind of blown me out of the water lately, I've just been thinking, what do I take for granted in, in the body of Christ? What do I take that I've just known for so long 
And it's just so normal to me that I don't put the awe and respect on it that it so needs. One of those things is that I am a child of God. We say it all the time. We know it to be true. And I don't want it to ever lose that power, that sense of awe that I am adopted into the family of God, that I have the title, the people of God, the child of God. May it never become so normal that we forget how amazing it is. 1 Peter 2 and 10, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. At one time, we were not the people of God. We had no mercy. But today, we are the people of God. We've accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, and we have attained mercy mercy. Romans 9 and 25 quotes Hosea, and we will read it right after Romans, but let's look at Romans 9 and verse 25. As he said also in Ose, I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not my beloved. God is saying, I'm going to call them my people. They were not at one time. They were not my beloved. They were not my people. But I'm going to call them. This is coming a time. They will be my people. They will be my beloved. Let's look at Hosea uh, 2 in verse 23. And I will sow her unto me in the earth, and I will have a mercy upon her that had not obtained mercy. And I will say to them, which were not my people, thou art my people. And they shall say, thou art my God. That's wonderful. We are adopted into the family of God. We are adopted into the promise of Abraham by the blood of Jesus. Okay, why do we need God's people? Why he, he has called us his people. We were not his people at one time. We are his people if we've accepted Jesus as our Savior. So why do we need God's people? 1 Corinthians 14 and 26. How is it then, brethren, when ye come together, every one of you have a psalm, has a doctrine, has a tongue, has a revelation, has an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edification. That word edify means building up, charging like a battery, to be built up. My friend, there's going to come a day that you're going to need to be edified. You're going to need to be built up. You're going to need to be built up in the body of Christ by somebody giving a psalm, by somebody giving a teaching, by somebody giving a revelation, uh, listening to what God is saying. God is saying, I'm going to give somebody else what you need. And you're going to have to gather together to get it. This is how God designed it. Hebrews 10 and verse 25. I've quoted this scripture. Let's read it together. Forsaking not the assemblies of yourselves together, as it is the manner for some, but exhorting one another. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. My friend, I hope you got a little taste of why we come together. Yes, the manifest presence of God. Yes, the power of the Lord. And yes, there comes a day that you're going to need a message from God. You're going to need a word from the Lord. You're going to need edification building up. And God says, I will give it to others and they will deliver it to you. <laughs> and I've already stated this, but I want to state it again. Church is not all about us. It's not about all what we can get, and what we can feel. And what can happen for us? But we need to be looking at serving others. How about this? Most of the time, we may not need anything. But somebody might. And as we gather together, God will give you a psalm. 
song to sing out. God will give you a revelation. God will give you a word of encouragement. God will give you hospitality to greet others that just need their faith and humanity restored. Somebody that just needs a, a hello. Somebody that just needs prayer. And you're there and God has given you the prayer to pray over someone else. We come to church not only to experience God, and I'm so thankful that we get to, but we come to church so we can be built up, but we come to church so God can minister to others through us. My friend, I hope this blessed you. I hope this message has encouraged you, and I hope you begin to understand how important you are to the body of Christ. We need you. We need you in person. We need you gathering together. We need you. We need you to give a word. We need you to build up. We need you to give encouragement. The body of Christ is stronger with you than without you. Do not believe the lie that you don't matter to the church. You don't matter uh, to others that it's not important that you show up. That is a lie from the enemy. Embrace God's word and then understand who you truly are and what God wants to do through you. Right where you are right now, I want you to do one more thing. I want you to ask the Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me through this message? What are you trying to deliver to me? Holy Father, what would you like to tell me today? Holy Spirit, is there a direction I need to go? Is there, is there a mentality I need to change? I believe God is speaking to you right where you are. Some of you, it may be a lie that you need to crucify, you need to get rid of. Some of you, it may be you haven't gone to church in a long time. It's time to come back to the family. It's time to come back to the fold. It's time to come back to your brothers and sisters who need you to be alongside of us, to worship with us, to help bring heaven down to touch earth, all because you're there. Allow God to use the gifts that he has placed on the inside of you to bless your family. Oh, my friends, if you say, I don't even know if I'm a part of the family of God, I want to be. My friend, today is your day. The Bible says that if we would confess with our mouth and believe with our heart that Jesus is the Son of God, we shall be, not might be, we shall be saved. Maybe you say, I've done that before, but I've walked outside the family of God. I'm not saying you made a mistake and you asked for forgiveness. I'm saying you have purposely decided to live outside of God's way of doing things and God's way of living. Today is your day to come home, my friend. Today is your day to come into the family of God. If you've never said a prayer, never confessed, never believed, or maybe you have and you've walked away, Let's come home today. Let's be a part of the family of God today. I want you to say this prayer after me. Are you ready? Let's say it together. You're, I'm going to say it and you repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, we confess that Jesus is the Son of God. We believe in our heart. So we know today that we are saved. Not might be, but we are. Today, we are children of God. We thank you, Father, that we are adopted into your family. In Jesus' name, amen. My friends, if you've said that for the first time, I'm so thankful. Get a hold of us. Let us know. If you come back home in the family of God, get a hold of us and let us know. Again, our church is a non-denominational church in Madison, Wisconsin. We meet Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. We would invite you to make our church your church. We would love for you to come be a part of our family. But I want to encourage you, get plugged into your local church. Get planted and allow God to flourish you in all that you do. And no matter what your age is, that your fruit will abound and be great for the kingdom of God and that you would be loyal, that you would be planted, and that God's purpose for your life would be manifest and it would bless others in Jesus' name. Ah, oh, my friends, I look forward to seeing you in person or online next week.